Here is Van Diemen's Tasmanian Saffron, a red ink. Let's jump straight to the end with my opinion on this ink. The paper I'm using here is a Moramon Nemesine notebook. This consistently looks like a faded fire engine red, you know, like a sun bleached actual fire engine. So not a red for me, but it's generally consistent in tone with only slight variation by nib and uncommon for red, this does tend to shade. It performs well enough on non-fountain pen friendly paper, but it comes off duller and less interesting, really unfortunate thing there. Now, if you want a soft red, for commenting in your writing, this just might be right for you. All of the writing samples are done with a Retro 51 P51 with a fine nib, a Retro 51 Corsair with a medium nib, a Retro 51 Lincoln with a 1.1 stub. The pen for today is a Jinhao 51A. Now that we know my opinion on this ink, let's see how I got there with the first writing sample done on Claire Fontaine. Looking at the extra fine nib, this is the lightest tone that we're going to get. Now it doesn't feather, it doesn't spread, it does shade really fairly well. Take a look at haste, or hastens to the gate on the second line, where the H is quite a bit darker, keeping it with that red. The S becomes quite a bit lighter, very light. The T a little darker, the E is very dark. The NS at the end, a bit darker. Now the is mostly the same uh, tone, but between the T and the H, it lightens up a little bit. So short words, not as much fading or as shading. The gate at the end, the G is fairly dark. The A lightens up a little bit. The T darkens again and the E very light at the end. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the extra fine. It does not feather and it does not spread. We see hints of shading, just not tons of shading. It's there, it's very faint. If you look at swirling on the second line, the S is lighter than the beginning of the W that gets fairly dark. It lightens up again into the IR and the Ling at the end is darker. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, it does not feather and it does not spread. It does shade, I think, better than it did with the medium, which it was there, but it wasn't stand out. Look at paved on the second line where the P is darker than the AV. The E gets quite a bit darker, it lightens into the beginning of the D, but that up and down stroke of the D are quite dark. Looking at the back of the page, I don't think it's gonna come through, but we can see in the medium, it actually got very deep into the paper. Not that it is enough that it's a real problem, but it's deep into this paper, very surprising with the Claire Fontaine. Now, I do think you could take your notes back here. There's no real ghosting, just marks of the ink being deep, but nothing bled through touching the page underneath. Like most inks, this one comes in a bottle. This is how the Pilot Custom A23 fits. And here is the Pelican M1000. Here is the ink level when you can no longer fill a Lamy Safari. There's approximately six milliliters of ink left. The next writing sample is done in a Portage Reporter's Notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is lighter and flatter in tone than it was on the Claire Fontaine. Just a tad bit lighter, really. It doesn't feather, doesn't spread. It has a moment or two, very light seasoning, bring that word back if I can remember it, of shading to behold. When we look at behold on the third line, where the B is darker than the E that lightened up a little bit, the H gets dark again, the OL lighten up some, but that D at the end does get a bit darker. Looking at the medium nib, it is just a tad bit darker than it was with the extra fine, lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. It does not feather and it does not spread. It does not shade. Not here with this paper. The more absorbent nature of this paper seems to be kind of sucking up that shading. 
Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, lighter and duller than it was on the Claire Fontaine. It does not feather and it does not spread. It does shade and it doesn't have to work especially hard to do it. Take a look at work on the first line where the W is lighter than the O that got just a little bit darker. The R lightens up a little bit, but that K, the darkest letter in the word. Looking at the back of the page, I can see this ink is very deep into the paper. I don't know about taking my notes back here for fear of losing both sets of notes, but nothing bled through touching the page underneath. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is immediately put into water for 10 to 15 seconds. The one on the right, marked with a D, is let dry for 10 minutes before putting into water. The next writing sample is done on a national brand Steno notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is lighter and duller than it was on the Claire Fontaine. I think more an effect of it being on non-fountain pen friendly paper because it's not changing the actual tone of the red we're getting. It's just that it's lighter and duller than it was similar to our last paper. Now it doesn't feather and it does not spread. It does have a few moments of shading, just not mountains of it. When you look at mountain on the second line where the M is darker than the O-U-N, the T gets darker again, lightening into the A-I and the N at the end becomes a little bit darker. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the extra fine, a lighter than it was on the Claire Fontaine. It does not feather and it does not spread. It does have shading, I think a little bit better than it did with the Claire Fontaine. I don't know, just for some reason seems to be coming through here. A little frightening, if you would. Look at frightened on the first line, where the F, the bottom of the F, is darker than the top of the F. It lightens into the R-I-G. The H-T-E darken a little bit. The N-E-D lighten. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium. Lighter and duller than it was on the Claire Fontaine. It does not feather and it does not spread. It does shade. Now it shades, but it shows off more of the lighter tones that this can really get in a rather smooth way. Take a look at smooth on the first line. Mostly really very light, kind of like a rose red. Darken, it starts to darken a little bit at the T and darkens up quite a bit more at the H at the end. Looking at the back of the page, as has been the case with this ink, we can see that it's getting very deep into the paper, meaning you might not want to take notes on the back of the page for fear of losing it. Now there was a spot with the medium nib that it did touch the page underneath, but that spot's fairly insignificant. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page. And more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. The highlighter is on the top left. Pen flush is on the top right. One third bleach solution is on the bottom left. And water is on the bottom right. The next writing sample is done in a Rhodia notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. It does not feather, it does not spread, it does shade just as well as it did on the Claire Fontaine. It's really grounded in what's happening. Take a look at ground on the third line, where the G is a little bit darker than the round, but the D at the end does darken up a bit. Looking at the medium nib, it is darker than it was with the extra fine, the same tone as the Claire Fontaine. It does not feather and it does not spread. It does shade, though you might have to be looking a little bit to see it. Take a look at looking on the second line, where look is mostly one, uh, one tone, nice softer red. The I darkens up a little bit. The N gets very light. It's during that G at the end that it gets quite a bit darker.
Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, the same tone as the Clairefontaine. It does not feather and it does not spread. It does shade as it is expected to do at this point. Take a look at expected on the second line where the EXP are fairly dark. The EC lighten up quite a bit. TE very dark and the D at the end quite a bit lighter. Now we're looking at this quad rule and this is the third writing that we've seen here. I think it stands out against this quad rule generally well, even with the extra fine, meaning it could be good for use if this is the type of paper you go for. Looking at the back of the page, Thank goodness it didn't get too deep into this paper. We get no bleeding, no ghosting, and can easily continue our notes back here. With over a thousand inks reviewed, let's take a look at some color comparables. Here is Ackerman, their number 17. Here is Diatramentis Franz Kafka, dark red. Here is Jeherban Rouge Hematite. Here is Pelican Garnet. The next writing sample is done in a composition lab notebook. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is lighter, duller, flatter than it was on the Clairefontaine. It does not feather and it does not spread. It does shade especially well. Take a look at Threat on the third line where the T is lighter than the H. The REA lighten up quite a bit. That T at the end, very dark, nice. Looking at the medium nib, it is a little darker than it was with the extra fine, quite a bit lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine. It does not feather and it does not spread. It does shade better than it did on the Clairefontaine, he said as he sighed. <sighs> Look at side on the second line where the SI are quite a bit light or like quite a bit lighter. It's during that G, it gets very dark. It lightens up again into the HE and beginning of the D, the end of the D that gets quite a bit darker. Looking at the stub nib, it is the same tone as the medium, lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine. It does feather, or sorry, does not feather, does not spread, it does shade, and rather suddenly at times when we look at suddenly on the first line, where the sud is fairly light in tone. It's during the up and down stroke of that first D that it darkens up a little bit, lightens into the second D, but then again during the up and down stroke, darkens, keeps it into the E. The NL lighten up a little bit, but that Y at the end, very dark. Looking at the back of the page, we get no bleeding, no ghosting, and can easily continue our writing back here. While it's nice to see ink in the same color family, I prefer to see ink to complement the color on the page. Here is Pelican Tanzanite. Here is Papier Plume Oyster Gray. Here is Levenger Skies of Blue. Here is Pilot Mixable Black. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Looking at the extra fine nib, it is the same tone as the Clairefontaine. It does feather and it does spread, but both of those I think are manageable. Definitely a little more than I would really want. But if this is really what you have to deal with, I don't think it's the end of the world. This wouldn't be my favorite experience. Looking at the medium nib, it is the same tone as the extra fine, lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine. It does feather and it does spread as it did with the extra fine. It is still in a manageable, serviceable position that I think you could use this and not lose what you've written. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a pass as being fairly decent here.
looking at the stub nib. It is the same tone as the medium, lighter than it was on the Clairefontaine. It does feather and it does spread. I think the feathering and the spread is not as noticeable as it was with the extra fine or the medium. The result of how that, the, that stub nib is really working for its benefit to look good here. I'm gonna call this the best of these three. Looking at the back of the page, we can see that the ink got quite deep into the paper. There is no writing back here. A lot of ghosting, but nothing bled through touching the page underneath. So what nib and pen do I think are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? The paper I'm using here is yellow Rhodia paper. The extra fine is the lightest tone, but not by much and it does shade. Now the medium and the stub are both the same tone, darker than the extra fine, but not a ton, and they both also tend to shade. Now while this isn't a tone of red for me, I can see how it can be enjoyable, and strangely, I think it looks great from the me a medium to dry flow, extra fine or fine nib. It makes it really, underspoken, soft in delivery. So pretty good for adding to your notes without screaming at you. I hope you got something out of this video and thanks for watching. I wanna let you know that the best way you can support this or any channel is to let retailers know where you heard of something if you go to buy.